Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about control, so let's get right into it. So really the first step for controlling power converters is modeling power converters. We have to know what the converter does and looks like before we can design a control system for it. So talking about control, power converters, and to do this, we need modeling. So for losses and stuff, we've already done DC mod modeling before. But now we have to do something different. We have to do what's called small signal modeling. So where the DC modeling could be kind of considered, I guess, large signal modeling, small signal modeling is really looking at what how the converter reacts to small changes in input signals. So if we think about our converter as a box, we kind of have a few different inputs and a few different outputs. So one of them is, let's say, the input voltage, right, VG. Another one is the output current, IL. Right, we've seen load dependent converters and we know that uh, non-ideal converters, even DC DC converters, hard switch DC, DC converters, they are still dependent on the load current. And then also uh, the duty ratio is kind of an input. So I'll write all these as functions of time, right? Because small signal modeling really refers to how these things uh, vary with time. And the output of this DC to DC converter or any converter is the output voltage typically could be an output current and this also varies with time so we want to model how variations in the input voltage affect the output voltage how variations in the output current affect the output voltage and how variations in the duty ratio affect the output voltage and we have three different measures for this so for modeling how the input voltage affects the output voltage we have something called the line to output transfer function which we uh, write as v g v g of s for the output current, how that affects the output voltage, we have something called the output impedance, right? Which is kind of what you expect, right? And then for the duty ratio, we have something called the control to output transfer function, which we denote as GVD of S, right? So more specifically, we can say that uh, GVG of S is like a ratio, right? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a conversion ratio, you could say, but it's a small signal frequency dependent transfer function, which relates changes in the output volt uh, output voltage to changes in the input voltage. And I'm going to put a little squiggle on top to indicate that these are small signal values, right? And then GVD of S is really variations in the output voltage with respect to the control variable d, d of t, small d, right? So a small change in d. And the output impedance is, as you expect, a ratio of the output, small change in the output, related to small changes in the output current. And I'll just be more precise over here and say this should be output, not L, right? I out. So how do we do this? Well, we can do it in a very uh, kind of straightforward way. We can use the same idea in uh, DC modeling. Which was to use IVSB and CCB. To generate equations and then we could from those equations we could generate circuits which we could put together to make a DC model a DC circuit model here instead of saying the typical IVSB statement which is something like VL of T, uh, VL averaged over one switching cycle is equal to zero this is normal IVSB and normal CCB says something along the lines of this right the average current through the capacitor is zero 
for small signal modeling, what we're going to say is that the voltage applied to the inductor over one switching cycle determines the change in the average current of the inductor. So we can say the inductor voltage or the voltage applied to the inductor over one switching cycle averaged over one switching cycle is equal to L times the time derivative, right? Because this is the, the general equation, V equals L di dt. But instead of a continuous current, we're going to use an averaged current, right? Average IL of t over one switching cycle, right? So we're applying this differentiation operator to this averaged current, right? So we're doing a moving average. And then similarly for the current in the capacitor, we can say something similar. We can say that it's equal to C D of T and then the time average value of the capacitor voltage, right? So this looks a little bit, a little bit confusing, but we can actually say it in a much easier way. Right, we can demonstrate what is actually going on in a simpler way. So if we think about, say, uh, an inductor current over time, if we're thinking about how this current changes over time, at the very beginning, we might charge it up and then it discharges a bit, charges up, discharges a bit, and eventually, after some amount of time, it reaches some steady state value, right? Where it starts and stops the same point. What this is saying is instead of assuming that it's already at steady state, we're going to assume that there's some change in the average over a switching cycle. So for each of these switching cycles, instead of thinking of this time varying current, we're going to think about the average of it in each of these points, right? So maybe, maybe for here, the average is somewhere over here. And then here, the average is somewhere over here. And here, it's somewhere over here, right? And then eventually, it becomes steady, some steady state value, right? And then if you connect all these points, we have some smooth curve where we've eliminated the high frequency switching components, but we're still able to track the lower frequency dynamics of the system. That's what we're doing with, with this modeling technique. So let's see how this applies to the buck converter. All right, so we have L, we have C, we have VG. I'll write it as VG of T. We have V out of T. We have RL, right? The, the usual stuff. Right, we can say that this is VL. This is VC. that's IL and this is IC, right? We can do IVSB and CCB again, but we're gonna use this you know, time averaging kind of idea. So for IVSB, what are we gonna say? Well, we're talking about the time averaged VL of T over one switching cycle. This is going to be equal to, well, I'll write D of T, because D can also vary, capital D, capital D of T times the applied voltage to the inductor. So when MS is on and SR is off in this first switching cycle, then we apply VG of T on one side and minus and V out of T on the other side, right? Minus V out of T. And then for the second half of the switching cycle, we'll have D prime of T, right? This also varies with time. And when SR is on, the positive side is zero and the negative side is minus V out of T, right? And this is going to be equal to, instead of zero, it's gonna be equal to L times D I L of T over one switching cycle DT, right? And then let's do uh, CCB now. So it's the same thing. So I C of T average over one switching cycle going to be equal to, well, in the first half, D of T, it's going to be equal to I L of T. I mean, we, we can, we can do all, do all this averaging for every single one of these variables. Maybe, maybe that's the best way to write it out. So I L of T minus V out of T 
over RL in the first half. And in the second half, we have D prime of T. And it's going to be the same thing, IL of T minus D out of T over RL, right? And again, it says this being equal to zero, it's going to be equal to the time derivative of the averaged uh, capacitor voltage over time, right? Cool. So this looks really complicated, but we're going to add a step, right? So this is two. We're going to add a step to this. And the step is we're going to perturb and linear, linearize these equations. Right, so what does that mean? It means that we're going to replace time varying signals, right? So let's say V of T, we're gonna replace it with a large signal component and a small signal component, or a DC and an AC component. We're gonna say V of T is equal to its average value V plus a small signal value, small, small V with a little tilde on top, right? And then also the same thing with currents, right? So I of T is gonna be replaced with it's average plus a little small signal component, right? So you could you could imagine this small signal component is the perturbation, right? We're gonna plug these into every place we see this time averaged, time varying signal. We're gonna expand it all out and then remove the nonlinear components, right? So just to reiterate, this is like a DC component and this is a small signal component. This is a DC component, and this is a small signal. So all signals, we're kind of doing this general thing, all signals have some average component, you could say, and some small signal component on top of it, or at least in switch mode power supplies. So let's do it, let's, let's do this. We Note, we also do this with D. So in particular, D of T is gonna go to its average component D plus, a small signal component, and d prime of t is going to go to its average component, d prime, minus d tilde of t, right? And why does this happen? It's because if d increases by a little bit, then d prime must decrease by a little bit, right? Because d plus d prime at all times is equal to one, right? So that's why d prime minus d tilde. So let's do this step. Let's apply this step to IVSB and CCB. So we're gonna go back to one, right? We're gonna do IVSB plus this perturbation that we've introduced. So just starting over here, D of T is actually D plus D tilde. V G of T is V G plus little VG. V out is equal to V out and little V out, right? Remember to keep the sign correct. In the second half, we have d prime minus d tilde, and then we have minus v out minus little v out. And this is going to be equal to L, and then we also have to do it for IL of t in here, right? So d by dt, and then we're applying this derivative to a large signal component and a small signal component, right? And what I want you to notice is that the derivative of a DC value is zero. So DIL of T by DT is equal to zero, right? Meaning this part is eliminated. You can just eliminate that part. Cool. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's expand this out now. Okay, so we have all these components and let's actually group them a little bit more together. So over here, these are all DC components, right? They, there are no tildes here, right? There are no small signals, it's all DC components. Here, all these components are one DC, there's one DC component and one small signal component in all of these terms over here, right? And then over here, they are two small signal components multiplied together. This is also a 
single small signal component, right? So this is small signal. This is DC. And these terms are nonlinear terms. Right, so we're actually going to eliminate these nonlinear terms. This is the DC solution of our converter, right? There's no DC component on this other side of the, of the equation, right? So what this is saying is, is just extracting out the DC component of this equation, right? All it's saying is dVg minus V out is equal to zero, right? We get the DC solution for free by doing this. The small signal component is what we're interested in, right? We have a small signal component over here and a small signal component over here. So let's write out that equation, L dil dt. Cool. So this is one equation. I'll put it, I'll make it, I'll say that star. This is the equation we get from IPSB. Note that isn't it, it, it contains d tilde, vg tilde, v out tilde, and also il tilde, right? So we need somehow to eliminate this il. Well, we have another equation, right? We can do ccb. So let's do, let's do ccb. We're going to have il plus little il minus v out over r minus little v out over rl is equal to, again, we can eliminate the dc component of this derivative. So it turns out vc is actually v out in this case. This is what we get. So grouping again, we can say we have il minus v out over rl. And we also have, again, the same thing, but small signal. And this is equal to c dv o by dt. We can group these again. All right, so this is a DC equation. And this is small signal. Or this is DC, sorry. So again, the DC equation gives us IL is equal to V out over RL, which is what we expect. And then the small signal equation gives us IL tilde minus V out over RL is equal to C DV out by DT. Okay, so we're almost there. The next step that we're going to do is combine these two equations together, right? It's, it's two coupled differential equations, but we can use Laplace transforms, which is what we expect to do, to generate a system of al algebraic equations, which we can solve directly. So let's do the Laplace transform. So from IVSB, or from this, this star equation, what do we get? Well, we get that d tilde vg plus d vg tilde minus v out is equal to sl il tilde, right? And then from, from the other equation, we get il tilde minus v out over rl is equal to sc v out tilde, right? Okay, so we can, we can solve directly for il here, right? IL is equal to V out tilde times SC plus one over RL. And then we can sub this into here, right? So DVG plus DVG tilde minus V out is equal to SL and then we replace IL with V out SC plus one over RL. Solving for V out, what we get is V out is equal to D tilde times VG over S squared LC plus S L over R plus one plus 
VG tilde. D over S squared LC plus S L over R plus 1. And from this, we can uh, find our control to output and our line to output transfer functions. So, just to re remind you, GVD is the control to output transfer function. It's frequency dependent, and it relates V out to D tilde. Specifically, when VG, small signal VG is zero. The line to output transfer function is similar, except it relates V out to VG when variations in the duty ratio are zero. So we can identify these two things here, right? So this is GVG or GVD, and this is GVG, right? Control to output and line to output. Another thing is that we can also use these equations to derive circuits, right? We can, we can use these things uh, to draw small signal circuits, right? So we have one equation here. What it's saying is that a voltage D times VG plus another voltage D times VG tilde minus a third voltage V out is equal to SL times IL, right? So this is like a current flowing through a circuit and this is an impedance, right? So we can say that this loop looks something like we have SL, we have a voltage, or I'll just put it as an independent source, D, VG. We have a, control, uh, a dependent source, which is D, VG tilde. And then we have another dependent source, right? V out. Right, so that this equation represents this loop. This equation represents our capacitor network, right? So we have a current going in, IL, a current coming out, V out over RL, that's equal to current going into some element C, right? So we can we can write that out. So we have this dependent current. IL. We have our load current, right? And we have our element 1 over SC. Right? And we can notice that this voltage here is V out, and this current here is IL tilde, right? So this loop, or this parallel combination of components, couples to this loop, right? We have a voltage here, V out, and we have a current here, IL. So if we combine these two, or this is one, this is two, if we combine one and two, what do we get? Let's just put them beside each other, right? So we have D, VG tilde, plus D tilde, VG, And this is V out with IL flowing through here. And then over here we have IL. Our 1 over SC and our RL. This is a transformer. It is a one-to-one -one transformer, right? This is the same thing from DC modeling. This is just a one-to-one -one transformer, right? There's no D, it's just one-to-one. -one. So if we combine everything together, what we get is a circuit that looks like this, right? If we just put it all into one loop. So again, we have D V G D tilde V G S L one over S C and R L. And from this we can find the output impedance. So the output impedance we evaluate when V G and D tilde are both equal to zero, right? Which means that our circuit 
We're just finding the impedance of a circuit that looks like this, right? So SL, 1 over SC, RL. And we're just looking in and checking out what the impedance is. Well, we can pretty easily calculate this. And it turns out that Z out of S is equal to, I'll just put it all together, SL over S squared LC plus S L over RL plus 1. Right? And then look, relating this back to the, uh, our, other, our other variables of interest, GVD of S is equal to VG S squared LC plus 1. And then our line to output transfer function is equal to D over S squared LC plus S L over R plus 1. Right? These are the three things that characterize our buck converter. The output impedance, the control to output transfer function, and the line to output transfer function. And you can notice that they actually all have the same denominator. Right? Is, which is kind of what you expect because they're all de derived from the same uh, circuit. They're basically all derived from this thing, right? And because of that, they all have this S squared LC plus S L over R plus one. So this is like the one way of modeling a converter, doing a small signal model. There are other ways and we'll look at them later. Thanks.